All right, everyone. So before I start this video, I want to make this quick disclaimer. Now, I won't be making this disclaimer every video. It will just be for this one since this is the first video of the series. So the first one is welcome to the No BS ICT Explain series. This series is something that I've been working on for a very, very, very long time. It took me such a long time to get everything ready for you guys, doing all the research, putting in the work, making it easy to understand. It's not easy. So I hope that you can understand all the topics that ICT has spoken about. Obviously, I won't cover every single thing that he has talked about, but I will be covering the essential stuff. OK, next is not every small detail is included in every topic. And what I mean is there are times where ICT digresses from the topic or sometimes he just says things that are fairly irrelevant to the topic that he is explaining. So I cut through it or sometimes there are little details that I personally would have deemed not necessary because it may not even have any influence on the strategy at all or topic. So I basically cut out all the fluff and put in all the bare bones in each topic for you to understand and use. Next, there is no holy grail of strategy. There is no concept, guys, that will make you successful. It is all about how you apply it. It is all about how you use it and how you put it together. OK. The best trader in the world could teach you what he knows, but if you don't know how to use it, if you don't apply it correctly, if you don't even put in the work to understand and use it, you will not be successful in this game. OK, examples shown have been cherry picked in order to clarify the topic. You will see that there are times where I show you an example throughout the presentations and it's going to be really, really hard for you to find on your trading view charts or whatever chart tool that you're using. Why? Because I looked for a very specific scenario for a very specific topic. Now you can find charts that may look fairly close to what I'm showing you. That doesn't mean they won't work. It'll just be a little harder to spot. That's all. The next thing is there will be more videos on ICT's topics, but I will mainly finish out the essential stuff that I want you to learn about ICT. And then I will continue on to doing more videos that I think are also necessary. And every now and then I will drop an ICT explains video. OK, now for the future series that I want to make, there will be a price action and smart money concepts series. but. I first want to see how this series does, if it even helps people out, if it's even worth putting in the time and effort. But if this video or these next few videos does very well, then you can definitely expect some more concepts to be explained. All right. And lastly, thank you so much for the support that you guys have shown. Thank you for the likes, the views. Thank you so much for the messages that you guys have left. They're very motivational. And if you guys keep showing support by liking and subscribing, you can definitely expect more amazing series to come. So without further ado, let's get started. OK, in this video, I will be talking about factors contributing to a trade scenario. Please pay very close attention to what I am about to explain to you guys. You don't have to take notes. You already have the notes because I will be sharing this presentation with you as I always do. But if you want, you can open up a chart and follow along. See if you can spot these very specific scenarios and do some market replay. See if you can catch a couple of trades at the same time. So let's get to it. OK, there are four factors contributing to a trade scenario. According to ICT, price action in any market and time frame tends to follow one or all four main patterns, expansion, retracement, reversal and or consolidation. Let's break down each one in a simple way. Consolidation. Picture a seesaw in the middle. That's consolidation. It's a period of sideways price movement with no clear trend. Buyers and sellers are evenly matched 
keeping the price bouncing within a defined range. Consolidation can be a precursor to either expansion or a breakout in either direction. Consolidations appear more often in the Tokyo session. Next, expansion itself. Imagine a basketball bouncing. It goes up, creating a higher high, hits the ground, causing a higher low, then bounces even higher, creating an even higher high. That's an expansion, a strong trending move where price keeps pushing higher or lower depending on the trend obviously in a sustained way. According to ICT, these expansions are usually part of what he calls a Judas swing. I will explain the Judas swing in more detail later down the line, but for now, I just want to keep it focused on these four factors. Next, retracement. Think of taking two steps forward and one step back. That's a retracement. It's a temporary pullback within a larger trend. In an uptrend, it's a dip that doesn't break the previous low before resuming the upward climb. In a downtrend, it's a brief rise that doesn't break the previous high before continuing down. Retracements tend to occur more often during the New York session. And lastly, reversals. This is like changing directions on a one-way street. It's when the prevailing trend completely changes, an uptrend turns into a downtrend, and vice versa. Reversals can be sharp and dramatic, or they can take time to form. Reversals tend to appear more in the London session. All right, now something that's very important is price or price delivery follows this cycle price will consolidate okay then it will expand and then it will either reverse if it is satisfied with the liquidity it took or it will retrace which means it will just continue expanding okay and then price will eventually go back to consolidating expand or reverse and then guess what back to consolidating that's it Okay, some additional info. Why does price react this way? Well, price is targeting liquidity voids or liquidity pools, fair value gaps, or known as imbalances, stop losses, order blocks, and the equilibrium or the 50% area, which I will talk about in a little bit. Time does play a crucial role in this. Consolidation tends to last longer than retracements, while expansions and reversals can be quick or drawn out. Volume can be helpful. Increased volume often accompanies expansions and reversals, while lower volume is typical in retracements and consolidations. Now, let's take a deeper look into these concepts. I want to talk about them in further explanation and hopefully clear out or make it a little easier to understand as we go through this, all right? Now the first concept is consolidation, right? In the inner circle trader method, consolidation is a period where the price of a stock or any asset isn't clearly going up or down, but is moving back and forth within a certain range or support and resistance level. This happens because the market makers want to induce people to buy and sell even though they shouldn't be. During consolidation, the price moves between two levels, a support level, which is the lowest point the players reach, and a resistance level, like the ceiling, which is the highest point the player reaches. The consolidation phase ends when the price breaks out of this range, meaning it either falls below the support level, like a player falling through the floor, or it rises above the resistance level, like a player jumping through the ceiling. Now, obviously, price won't always tap that very specific resistance or support level a bunch of times but it can tap into it once or twice or it would just bounce in between that area or those areas of support and resistance in this example of consolidation you can see price dancing or flowing in between the support and resistance area and in the middle you'll have your equilibrium or 50% zone of the consolidation. 
Now, obviously, price isn't always going to touch your support or resistance level visibly and say, oh, wow, this is definitely consolidating. It won't always do that. So just be very aware of what you're looking at. Now, you can see price breaks out with really strong momentum to the upside. Now, it could have easily, just as easily, breaking out towards the downside. All right. Now, something I should mention that it doesn't always consolidate specifically in the Tokyo session. It can happen in the New York and London session. It's just that ICT heavily focuses on the Tokyo session. OK, just that you should be aware of and just keep an eye out in case you do trade the London or New York session and you notice price is doing something similar to this, then it's probably not a good idea to trade that day. Now, let's talk about expansion. When price expands, price will shift quickly either from the middle point, the equilibrium, or the cheaper zone of the gathered consolidation. This is when the market makers usually show their hand and push price where they want it to go. You can look for a point of interest at or near the equilibrium that was left behind. When price finally expands, it is usually looking for liquidity or it expands for a certain amount. For Forex pairs, 20 pips is the average amount. And in this example, you can see price was consolidating, right? And then it breaks out and takes out some previously left behind liquidity, retraces into the equilibrium or this order block that was left behind, and then continues its way back up. And as you can see, it created a higher low and then eventually went back into its original direction. All right, so let's talk about retracement. A retracement, according to the ICT or inner circle trader, it is like a small step back and a long journey. Imagine you're walking from your home to school. You're mostly moving forward, right? But sometimes you might stop and step back a little to pick up a coin you spotted or you left something behind and need to retrieve it. That little step back is what we call retracement in trading. It is a temporary move in the opposite direction of the overall journey. Look for fair value gaps and liquidity voids as a POI, or you can even use the Fibonacci levels to find their optimal trade entry before entering trades. These entry levels are 0.618 or 0.62 if you like it more rounded, 0.705 and 0.79. Now, guys, you won't always, always, always get an optimal trade entry. Sometimes you can miss a trade, but you can always combine it with a fair value gap or a liquidity void. Specifically, you could really just do it with fair value gaps. In my opinion, you'll be just fine with it, but it's up to you. And in this example here, you have market structure moving down, right? So let me mark this up real fast for you. So here you have a higher high or a higher low, however you want to call it. Then you have your lower low and then you have some internal structure right here down. And then finally price taps into a fair value gap and then goes right down breaking or causing a break of structure really easy really simple or you could have used this as liquidity for price to come back up take out that liquidity and then go straight back down and as you can see it touched the 70.5 which is more known as the optimal trade entry right here in this specific level and then you could have entered here as a limit order or you could have just waited for the first rejection and then targeted this set of liquidity or you could have targeted either one of these Fibonacci levels. Lastly, let's talk about reversals. A reversal is where a liquidity level is breached and a trend reversal occurs, meaning price completely moves to the opposite direction or a complete shift in the trend. Traders often observe a gap on their chart during this event. This is referred to as a fair value gap by ICT traders or ICT himself. I'm going to be honest, you won't always notice a gap 
when reversals happen, but they can happen. Next is you should look for any resting liquidity or liquidity pools, which is really just an accumulation of liquidity by looking at major old highs or lows. You can even look for a double bottom or a failed break of structure as a sign of a possible reversal. And in this example, you can clearly see the failed break of structure on the four hour right here in this area. And when the trend was reversing, you can drop down to the lower time frame and you can see that it actually grabbed some liquidity before heading right back up into the opposite direction. Now, if you're a smart enough trader, you could actually capitalize on this by noticing the fill break of structure here and then noticing that there was a liquidity grab continuing back up. Now, personally, I don't recommend you trying to trade a reversal trade or trying to catch these kind of trades because they can be very risky. But if you do catch them, they can be very, very rewarding. All right, so you made it to the end of this video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that it cleared something out, whether it was this concept or maybe there was something else that you had in mind and maybe there was a part in this video that helped you out. Either way, if there is a specific concept that you wanna know or learn and you want me to explain it for you, let me know down in the comments below and I will do my best to make a video on it. And lastly, before I go, I want to leave some godly wisdom to you guys. And that is from 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. And it says, for just as the body is one and has many parts and all the parts of that body, though many are one body. So also is Christ. But we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. We are all given one spirit to drink. Indeed, the body is not one part, but many. So everyone, I hope that y'all become blessed traders. And remember, trading is subjective, but God is not.